We want to go to the phone lines right now and be joined in uh, with us by a man who's a Major League Baseball analyst for TuneIn, and he can be heard on a pregame edition of MLB on TuneIn Live tonight at 5 p.m. Eastern time, as well as immediately following the World Series game. He's the man who threw out the first pitch before game one last night at Progressive. He is Kenny Lofton. How are you, Kenny? I'm doing pretty good yourself. Where'd that one rank for you last night? What's that now? Where'd that experience rank for you in your lifetime um, last night? You know what? I tell people, I, I played in the World Series. So, yep. I mean, just being the early part of it, it's just small of it. But to actually be in the game, it was bigger for me, said that way. Sure. So what was it like, I guess, getting out there uh, uh, on the uh, on the mound and firing that one in there? Did you, did you warm up at all, Kenny? Oh, yeah. I got my arm loose because, you know, I'm not as young as I used to be. So I had to make sure my arm wouldn't go. You know, just fall out of the socket when I threw that pitch, and I knew I wanted to put a little oomph on it. So, mm-hmm. you know, so uh, no, I, I felt good. It was it was it was great to be honored in this historical event. You know, the World Series, and on top of it, with the Cubs and the Indians having won the World Series in a long time, it was. I just felt that it was a, an historical moment, and I was glad to be a part of it. And we saw on Twitter, on social media, Kenny, your trip oh from yeah. Los Angeles. So, you you. Somebody gave up their seat to you so you could get on the flight from Los Angeles to Cleveland. Is that what happened, Kenny? Yeah, it was. It was, it was exactly that. It wasn't, but it, I think it was. I think the media made it bigger, but I mean, it was pretty big because I was supposed to be. I when the Indians first did my flight arrangement, they tried to get me on that flight, but it was completely sold out. Mm-hmm. So they tried to get me into a flight from another city. I said, "Well, try maybe Chicago or something where you know I can just get somewhere and." So they ended up getting me a flight going into Chicago, then Chicago Cleep. So I'm like, fine. I went to the airport, found out my flight was going to leave probably at 2.30. I was supposed to leave at 11. Mm-hmm. It left. It was supposed to leave. After it got delayed, it was going to leave like at 2.50, almost 3 o'clock in the morning. <sighs> so I'm like, oh, jeez. And then they told me, they said, when you get to Chicago, there's no flights in Chicago because they are all completely sold out going into Cleveland. Because, again, the, everybody's going to Cleveland, the Cleveland fans from the Cavs and the Indians, everybody's trying to get to Cleveland. So I couldn't get a flight, and they said, well, we can try Houston. But there's no guarantee you're going to have to be on standby. I'm like, oh, man. He said, we, we said, maybe you get standby, you can get to Cleveland. Maybe you get standby, you get to Columbus. No guarantee. I'm like, oh, shoot. So I was at the airport, so I was rushing to get to the airport to try to catch the other flight, mm-hmm. and the gates were kind of next to each other, but I didn't know that. And my mind was changing, okay, get to the airport, get to the, you know, get to the gate. So I was running to the gate, and I looked up in front of me, and I saw Cleveland. That's the word. I just saw Cleveland. Mm-hmm. So I said, you know what, boom, let me just get the line. I said, I got my first guy's ticket, get in line, blah, blah, blah. And I got to the line, and they put my ticket down. I'm like, oh, no, I'm not going to Cleveland. I'm going to Houston to get to Cleveland. So, and all of a sudden, the people with families and people in the line, they said, Kenny Lofton, how are you doing? Do you want a good picture? I'm like, yeah, yeah, my ticket didn't work. I'm like, oh, shoot. I said, you know what? I'm not on this flight. I got to get to another flight to try to get to Cleveland from another flight. And people trying to get autographs and taking pictures. I'm like, I got to go. I got to go try to catch this other flight. I'm not on this flight. I am, I'm sorry, I'm not on this flight. So one guy said, hey, man, I'll, I'll give you my flight. I'm like, yeah, yeah, whatever. He said, yes, I will give you my seat on this plane. He said, I don't have to be at work. I'll be on the, you know, I can, you know what, just here, take my ticket. I said, we just can't do that. And they said, we'll go up to the desk, talk to the lady. And see if she'll, and she said, well, I don't know. And everybody's like, come on, come on, let him do it, let him do it. You know, fans, people was like, come on. It was a big old thing. And then she said, well, I said, sir, I mean, I'll pay you. He said, no, no, I don't. I said, come on, man. He said, no, I'm a big Indians fan. I've been, had season tickets, lifelong to Indians fan. You can take my seat. So wow. that's kind of how I got to that point. Unbelievable, Kenny. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, we, we see the pic, you know, radio audience, and for your purposes, we see the the selfie you took with this fella named Ken who gave you a seat. What well, was it a was it a good seat? Was it a middle seat? Where where was the seat, Kenny? Did it matter? <laughs> it wasn't my normal seat. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, I'll just say it that way. <laughs> uh, but but, uh, but it was a direct about, flight. You got there. Yeah, direct flight. And the good thing about the people that were sitting next to me. They wasn't, you know, they wasn't the size of a sumo wrestler, so it was good. So it, it was roomy. I wasn't one guy was a little small, okay. small guy. He was like <laughs> up against the wall, so he was kind of asleep. And the other lady was had her 
headphones on, and she was smaller on the other side. So I had a wide area in the middle, so I was good. Well, in a way, was, this is this is a neat story to try and bring out um, something that I, is, I it's not overlooked, but it's definitely overshadowed because of how long-suffering the Cubs fans are and how emotionally tied the Cubs fans are to their team and how long they've been waiting and how intense of a, of a fan feeling there is for the Cubs. And, you know, the Indians and the Cleveland fans are no slouch either, Kenny. I mean, you've lived it. You, you tried to bring a championship. You got awfully close to bring that championship. You know, I mean, I'd love for you to give some voice to that, as you saw from this guy who gave you his seat. No, I understood. I mean, I understood just, again, why he did it and understanding the, the history of being a, you know, me, you know, end up being an Indians fan because of my, my time in Cleveland and knowing that the heartache and the hardship that this these fans been going through for years and years, and finally this year is a big year, and I think they're trying to keep – building on this year because again it hasn't happened in so so long so and i think this is just a, a testament of what cleveland is all about and what these fans are all about about trying to help in any possible way they can to make things brighter in the city of cleveland kenny lofton joining me here again i'll be on mlb on tune in live continuous coverage of the world series with live pre and post game coverage on demand content on MLB, on TuneIn, the podcast as well. Kenny Lofton joining me here. So what happens tonight, do you think, uh, with Game 2, Arietta versus Trevor Bauer? The Cubs have been susceptible to the curveball. Obviously, uh, Bauer's got a, um, a nice 12-6. Or what, what do you think happens tonight, Kenny? Um, honestly, because during, during a 12-6, you have to get that pinky finger involved, and they say it's fine. But when you got, I was telling people, there's a difference between five o'clock batting practice and seven o'clock game, and I think that's going to be the the thought process. He just threw a bullpen or whatever he did to get ready. There's no adrenaline going on, and when you have an injury, and you know, and everyone knows, when you have an injury, blood flow gets toward that area. It's like a it's like a sensor, and he has an injury, and the 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 excitement, the Anytime he'll have his arm hanging constantly, all the time pitching, and the, the excitement, the force on that finger, I'm just a little worried about that. So, uh, so that's all. I'm yeah. Worried about it. So, uh, how do you think the bats do against Arietta, though? On the other side, I mean, Arietta, he's like, he's like, he's like my golf game. It's hit or miss. You don't know. <laughs> so, I think that's what's going to happen with him, and he can be dominant, and then he can be just like, you know, like, dude, where are you coming from? So. It's just a case of he pitches well. He's going to be tough for the Indians because he has nasty stuff. But if he pitches the way he's been kind of sometime the way he has been recently, are the Indians going to win game two? But if he does what the the Cubs are expecting from him, mm-hmm. oh, it's going, it's, going to be, it's going to be a tough battle for the Indians. Kenny Lofton joining me here on the Rich Eisen Show. So it's Bayerga tonight, right? Carlos is throwing oh, out the first pitch? Oh, yeah, Carlos. <laughs> yeah, Bayerga. <laughs> so, so it's Bayerga. Where, where's Tommy? Where's Vizcal? Are they all around? Is it, is everybody getting? Is the whole? So I saw Hargrove. Is the whole band uh, band getting back together for this series? Kenny? Um, I'm not. I'm you know I'm not sure. I just kind of you know go what they tell me. So, okay. I don't know. And then I guess on a scale of one to ten, how crazy was Albert Bell, Kenny, from scale of one to ten? You know, see that's there's 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 two folks. Okay. When you say on the field and off the field, you know, I mean he's. And well, actually, three folds. And when he's in a certain, certain place, I don't know. Because again, I was good friends with him because I understood him. But a lot of people didn't understand him. But on the field, he wanted to play every out, every inning, every day, all the time. You know, when we have a blowout, you know, that they want to take the starters out, he gets pissed off when they take him out. Mm-hmm. He's like, I'm not. I don't want to go out. That's just how he was. But and then did the, the second part, the other part, in the locker room, he's like a genius. He's sitting there with those crossword puzzles, and he'll just just start just, just start ripping them off. Crosswords? Like, do do? No, yeah, those puzzles were, yeah, oh, my goodness. <laughs> See, with people asking Albert questions about crossword puzzles. Oh, yeah. How about he that? Little, he was a little brainy nerd, I called him. I said, you little nerd. <laughs> but, yeah, because he was, yeah, and then all of a sudden, he'll do stuff and something to make him click, and then he'll go off. Like, wait a minute, wait, come on. 
But if he didn't perform the way he wanted to perform, oh, he goes off. He throws tantrums mm-hmm. like, like a little kid. Oh. Throws tantrums. Did you, yeah. ever, did you ever meet Wesley Snipes, the character that was supposedly based on you for Major League, Kenny? I went, I've met Wesley, yes. What was that like? I mean, it was cool. I mean, nothing special, really. Okay. You know, it right. was because he's an actor. He's an actor. Okay. Oh so, yeah, look at it. You're an actor. I just, I don't you're know. I thought maybe, maybe you just, you know, you talked about it with him. Maybe you went over his taxes with him. I don't know. You helped him out with that. I don't know, Kenny. Oh no, no. If I, if I, if I went over his taxes, he wouldn't have been the predicament he was in. So, and then <laughs> last night, while you're throwing out your first pitch, the guy who was on your Arizona team uh, lost by 29 to the Spurs last night. How often are you in contact with Steve Kerr? Okay. Oh, no, we talk, you know, we talk every so often. I'll, you know, shoot him an email or I mean, a text message or I'll call him and he'll say, what's up? Or he'll come in town or mm-hmm. LA, he's in town or whatever. And this, so we just, because he, I know he's, he's busy and I just, you know, just, Hey, what's up, man? And we'll respond back. And yeah, no, we, when we, he responds back all the time. No, so, but I know he's busy, but he does respond. Okay. So, no, he's, He's going, you know, we have a good relationship. Yeah, and Tolbert, yeah. Tolbert's up there, the oh, radio he's, show. He's all over the Warriors. Crazy. Tol- he's crazy. He is nuts. Over, oh my goodness! Yeah. And, well, he was like that in college, and he hasn't changed. So that's a good one. Good thing about that, he hasn't changed, and we all know that. You know what? He hasn't changed. Yeah. That's Tolbert. Yeah. Yeah. What heck all of good. a what heck of a team you had? Sean Elliott, oh. Bushler, Coach Lute. Yeah. You had a you Rooks. had a you had a great team. Right we had, there. Yeah, we had Sean Rooks. Yeah, he was on there as well. That's right. Hey, look, oh, okay. thanks thanks for calling in strolling down memory lane. Congrats on no throwing that strike and uh Thank have you. fun with the with the MLB on tune in the rest of the series. Okay, perfect. Thank you. You got it. That's Kenny Lofton. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience.